extending the upper income tax cuts based on what we've already heard fairly explicitly in the political environment is that uh, you do that now, you're going to do it forever. You do that now, you're going to do it forever. The president clashing with members of his Economic Recovery Council who warned him hiking taxes on the so-called rich right now would hurt the economy. Stunningly, the president seemed to admit it's probably a good idea to, 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 let, to delay those tax increases, but he fears that if he doesn't stick it to the rich now, he may never be able to raise their taxes. They might not be rich any longer. Why is he so intent on making one group of people who already pay the vast majority of taxes pay even more? My own Council of Economic Advisors is here. Our freedom fighters, trend forecaster Jerry Salenti, radio talk show, show host Leslie Marshall, and my my friend and Fox colleague and host of the wonderful morning show, Varney and Company, or as he would say, Varney and Company on the Fox Business Network. Stuart Varney, my good buddy Stuart, Thank to you. you first. Why is the president so intent on taking what the Congressional yeah. Budget Office estimates would be $600 billion away from investors and having the government consume it? Income and wealth redistribution is at the heart of every single policy initiative that this president has come up with in eight months. So reason number one, income redistribution. Point number two, he thinks that if you keep low taxes on the rich, they won't spend the extra money that they're taking home. He is absolutely wrong. The rich control 37% of all spending. They would spend that money and invest the rest. Leslie, private industry produces wealth. The government consumes wealth. So which is a better way to make use of $600 billion? The, the, the number, so you know, is the Congressional Budget Office's estimate of what would come into the government if the Bush tax cuts on the rich are allowed to expire. Which would be a better way to produce wealth with that $600 billion? Invested in private economy or consumed? consumed by federal bureaucrats. Well, Judge, I'm a history buff, and my history shows me that in the Clinton administration, without Bush tax cuts, over 23 million jobs created. With the Bush tax cuts, less than 8 million jobs. Unemployment went up every year in the Bush administration. Right now, we have unemployment hovering around 10 percent and a bad economy. Statistically, the rich people did not spend and, and stimulate the economy with this money, nor did they hire people, at least in this country, with this money. Uh, show me the money, show me the jobs. And the authors of this specifically had a 10-year time frame. If they felt it would benefit the economy longer than that or at all, they wouldn't have had 10 but years. They would have Jerry, had 15, 20. But Jerry, the rich don't put their money in a shoebox. Wherever they put it, it has to enhance the economy, whether they put it in a bank or whether they risk it in an investment. Particularly the people that are going to be hit the hardest. The president is being disingenuous. He's calling people that are making over $200,000 a year rich. And when you look at the numbers, 80% of the people that are going to get hit are people making between two hundred dollars and $500,000 a year. It's not poor, but it's not rich. We're not talking billionaire class. And these are the people that support the community. These are the people that support the arts. These are the people that are active. And these are the people who are going to get hurt the most. Might this be the reason why so many Democrats, especially Democrats running for re-election in three weeks, are running away from the president? Yes, it's bad economics. It's also, it may arise the issue of morality. Yes. I think it is flat out immoral to take more than half of anyone's income, more than 50 cents on the dollar. If you add up federal and state income taxes, you are taking more than half of people's income. That is immoral and, dare I say it, un-American. Have you ever heard the argument that taxation is theft? Yes. Yes, you have. <laughs> Leslie, why does the president want to take this money from the most productive people in society? Stated differently, why are Democrats running for office, running away from the president on this one? Well, first of all, I'm a Democrat and I have cojones, guys, and I think any Democrat running away from the president lacks backbone and cojones, and, and, and they shouldn't do that, and I think it's actually hurting right, the party. But you're not, you're not running for November anything. Your, your job oh, is I'm not on the line. I'm too smart for that. I'm too, I'm too smart for that, Judge, please. Uh, because, you know, talk shows stay and go, regardless of politicians yes, in the we White do. House and to Congress. Uh, but in, in answer to your question about why would he want to do this, let me tell you something. I am not a money gal. I am not a Wall Street person. All right, 30 and, seconds. Uh, I, I don't even play Vegas, but Warren Buffett is. And Warren Buffett thinks this is a good idea, and I think he's done pretty well. I stand behind WB on this. All right, Marsh, Marshall, Salenti, Varney, stick with us. 
as the trial of Ahmed Jelani for bombing U.S. embassies in East Africa in 1998 moves forward in federal court in New York City. Here's something you have a right to know about the Constitution. The Fifth Amendment to the Constitution prohibits forcing a person to testify against himself. It prohibits the government from engaging in all forms of coercion, whether they call it enhanced interrogation or torture. The government tortured Mr. Galani in a foreign country, forgetting that wherever it goes, the Constitution follows, and it kept him locked up for 12 years before charging him with any crimes. The reason the Constitution prohibits torture is because of the framers' horrific experiences with governments and kings who thought they could do anything they wanted to obtain confessions or testimony. Now, why am I telling you this? Because earlier this week, in Mr. Galani's trial, Judge Lewis Kaplan barred the government from presenting critical evidence to the jury because the witness's name and involvement in the plot through whom the evidence would have come was obtained under torture. In doing so, he wrote that he was acutely aware of the perilous times in which we live. But, he said, quote, the Constitution is the rock upon which our nation rests. We must follow it, not only when it is convenient, but when fear and danger beckon in a different direction. To do less would diminish us and undermine the foundation upon which we stand. The judge did the right thing. At the time Mr. Galani was being tortured, he was thought to be a witness to someone else's crime. If the government could get away with torturing him, it could justify torturing you. We don't condone torture, period. God bless you, Judge Kaplan, for upholding the Constitution. The White House and the media seem to be declaring that the tarp was a victory for taxpayers and even made them money. Since when is fraud against the taxpayers good for them? More with our freedom fighters, including Varney, next.